Hey, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mitch over at IndieSoft. Um, Tip Tuesday. This week, what I wanted to do was make a quick video showcasing our tool crib utilities in which you can track. Not just, you know, we all, we all know with our software, we give you the ability to track when something comes in and out of the cat lab or in and out of a tool crib. You can perform a check-in or a check-out event. But one of the overlooked features that I think is in their system is we also give you the ability to track more than just a uniquely identified gauge, right? A gauge is where we have a one-to-one -one relationship. We have a unique identifier on there, and, and that record is a, is a one-for-one, -one, right? So that's something like a multimeter, a torque wrench, a caliper, et cetera. However, in the software, we also let you track consumables and hand tools. In fact, actually, you can even define your own categories of those, which you'll see here in a moment. But I want to, by definition, explain really quickly what a hand tool is, um, at least in terms of our software. So a hand tool is something, like I'm looking at this particular one here. This is a an end mill. Um, I've got, in my case, th there's my tool ID number. I've got my make, which um, you know model number if we have that or want to track that. But then what you're going to see is, we have how many do you actually have on hand? Okay, so a hand tool, the concept is we have a certain specific inventory, and as items are issued out, inventory decreases. As items come back in, inventory increases. Okay, so now when we're using this part of the software, we also engage and we're going to use what's called the quantities and bins tab. Okay, so this is a tab that if you're actually using the tool group components, this becomes available. So now I can actually see okay, I have this particular tool ID, but where are they actually located? So in my case, I've got a total of 318 on hand, but I've got the inventory actually assigned with, well, uh, location FL1001 has 230 of those with 28 that are actually issued out. FL1002 has 88 of those, okay? So we can actually see and track that. You're also gonna see up in the upper right-hand corner that I have a particular quantity that are actually on order. So in the system, you can actually have events, just like we have events when we're doing a calibration or a preventative maintenance or repair, we can actually have events where you can actually order parts, right? You can see here where I've performed an order event in my history. So I want to show you is we have this quantities and bins tab, which really just gives us the ability to indicate what inventory we want to issue and or check out. Now this is on a hand tool, okay? This is one of the tool types that I want to show you in this video. <clears throat> One of the other things that I want to show you is, let's say it's a consumable, okay? Now, a consumable might be something like safety glasses, right? Like, we know we all spend a lot of money on these and or, or other types of tools. And when we issue these, we may want to reduce that from inventory. Now, the tool type of a consumable, the concept is, once it's issued, we're never going to get it back, right? It truly is consumed. This could be things like safety glasses. It could be things like paper towels or even, uh, you know, earplugs. Or in my case, you know, I don't know why I pointed my ears there, but it could be, you know, in anything, right? Now, what you can configure in the system is actually your own tool types. Now, this is what I want to go and show you. So when I go to create a piece of equipment here, you're going to see in my system for my tool crib, I have the option in here to create a consumable, I have the ability to create a gauge, which we all know what that is. We can create hand tools, which is where the inventory increases and decreases, but we're not uniquely identifying your records. And then you can even create um, your own additional group names. So you can see here I've created one for IT hardware. Let's say you've got a situation where you want to track all of the, the monitors or your you know, you have particular types of connection cables or something like that. Well, you're not going to uniquely serialize those but you may want to treat those as like a hand tool. Okay, so you have that ability. You'll also see where I have like clean room parts. I'm treating those as consumable. So we give you different ways to categorize those as you desire, okay? But ultimately, once we have these types of things uh, listed into the system, and you'll create those just like you would a regular gauge, except for we're now gonna have this quantities and bins tab, which is an area where you can actually go in and we can actually add additional locations in. So let's say that we needed to assign some inventory to a new location. We could actually do that. We could set up a sub-location if we wanted to. Um, but now, what it allows me to do, and let me just actually choose that location of F103, and then we'll give it a sub-location since I didn't do that. But we'll just say test cart one, okay? Well, what we allow you to do is you can identify 
and set up things like a safety stock, annual usage, minimum reorder points, carrying costs for this inventory. Um, we also give you the ability to set up custom fields if you need that. So lots of options in here just to track the, the locations. But what happens is, let's say that I want to go ahead and specify that 25 are actually in test car one. Well, now what it lists out is now I've got a total of 320 on hand, but then uh, those those inventories are actually stored in these various different locations and sublocations. Okay, so with this tool crib concept, right, in this I guess inventory tracking, is really what we're doing is we're we're modifying inventory levels by transaction or check in check out activity. So we'll say that hypothetically we have a situation where a user comes up to our tool crib and we want to issue out inventory. We would launch our checkout transaction. Now this can be configured in a handful of different ways. Some of our customers check items out by location. Some do it by employee, maybe the department they work to, maybe you're sending it out for retooling. So there's lots of options and, and variability there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify that I want to check this out to a location. Now when we select OK, what the system is going to do is it's going to bring out like an out to location transaction. This is where you can grab your barcode gun scan the inventory of what you want to check out. I've got a lot of customers that they'll use, they'll actually just print out like a binder with all the common things they check out a lot. Okay. Now you can actually have this default to the location that you're sitting in as well. So it might be a situation where you have multiple tool cribs, but let's say I want to check this out from, you know, we'll just say I've got 68 on hand and location 45A and I want to check out a couple different pairs of these. So let's say five. Now, when I specify and hit OK, you can see I've got my safety glasses. There's the part number that I'm checking out, which in my case is, or my case is just called flash safety glasses. Um, you can actually look at your columns here and you can add different columns of data in. But we also give you the ability to barcode scan other information. So let's say I want to key in my employee or scan a badge for the user IndieSoft. It puts that directly into the checked out to field. We may have like a job location field that you want to fill out. You may have you know multiple different options where you might want to set it up to where you have a, a cost center that you want to build this to or something like that. So that's all flexible, as you all know, within the software. But as I perform this transaction, and what I'm going to do is just hit finish. I've got to move that uh, camera over. There we go. But when I go to hit finish on this, what happens now is that transactional history is going to be recorded. So we can see here on July 20th at 327 we just changed our inventory. I no longer have, well, what I have now actually is 315 that are actually on hand because in our history, we're going to be able to go back and see that we reduced that by five. Okay. If we look at our quantities and bins, this particular one, it was actually at 68. Now we're at 63. Okay. So the concept there being, if it's a consumable item, we consume it and then it never actually comes back. Now, what I want to do for you really quickly is let me actually perform a transaction or check out on, on, let's say, this particular asset, which is where we've got, this is a hand tool, so the inventory can come and it can go, actually. So let's go and we'll launch the checkout transaction on this one. Um, same as before, we'll check it out to a location. Um, we'll say that I want to pull from my, uh, we'll say from, from my cart or my location of FL 102. We'll say I want to check out three of these. Um, now in here, I could come in and I can add in additional, you know, I could populate my data, of course. Um, but let's go ahead and check out this item. And by the way, you know, you can actually do things in batch. We encourage you to do that. In fact, actually, when you're doing a managing a tool crib, it's, it's typically a fast transaction. So you have a barcode, you're scanning a badge, you're scanning the asset, and you want to make this quick. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit finish on this. Now we're going to see when that transaction is completed. Same thing as before. My inventory that was in FL102, I now have 85 that are on hand versus 88. I've got three that are out. Okay. All that history actually starts to consolidate. So you can see here where I have my out to location transaction. Now the last thing that I want to show you is let's say that we checked out three of those. The shift is over and someone is ready to turn in, but they only turn in one. Okay. So same thing as before. We're going to launch the check in event. Um, when we perform the check in event, we can check in from one of those various different options. Again, that's contingent on your workflow and how you desire to see that. But when I perform this check in, in this case, it's actually going to give me a list of all the places 
where I've actually checked these items out to in the past, right? So I can actually see that. I can choose from in this list if I wanted to, if, if I desire, or I can actually just say, I want to, you know, here, here's how many I want to check back in. Um, so let's say that uh, it's, you know, this particular location that, or it doesn't matter which one I select, we'll say this location turn these items back in. When I launch that, it's going to give me a list down at the bottom of all the other relevant items that are actually checked out as well. So if there are other locations or other items that we had issued out, we would give you that ability to, to indicate that. Okay. So in here, what I'm going to do is just hit finish, mark this as complete. So now that we actually perform some additional events, now we check some back in, right? So now we're on hand is back at 317 because we just brought two back okay so what happens is the inventories are going to increase and decrease with a hand tool a consumable the inventory is just going to be consumed and be one way or one direction with that said we do give you the ability to set up events where you can add to inventory you can order to inventory there's multiple different statuses so really quickly i know this is a long tip tuesday but I wanted to educate you guys all on, on how we can set those things up. So what I'm going to do is just go back to my main dashboard here. And there's two things that really go into configuring and setting this up. One is, is you're going to have different preferences. Okay. So you have certain users who may not need this tool room activity level stuff. So what you can do is go to your user slash your location settings. And there's an option here under your application settings, where if you do want to utilize the tool and feature set, you'll just check this box here. What that's going to allow a user to do is actually create hand tools and or um, uh, consumables. The second thing is when you're in your workflow configuration, now out of the box, some of these things are actually enabled for you. However, in workflow configuration, under step three, and I know I'm navigating and getting that opened up right now, but under step three, and let's just go to my checkout event here. What you're gonna see is, in here there's options for what type of inventory change do you want to perform okay so as an example let's say that we want to um, add to inventory right in my add to inventory event you'll see i've got an event for that what i'm doing is i'm taking items and moving the status to being from on order to on hand right so because this is an item where i'm adding to inventory now if it was my event called order inventory if I scroll down, you'll see I've got an order inventory event. Um, my order inventory event, I'll say, no, I don't want to modify that. What I'm doing is I'm taking a certain quantity and I'm putting it into a status of on order. Okay. So this particular field right here for what's called your inventory change, this is directly applicable to your consumables and your hand tools in here. And depending upon which event type you're performing, this is where you would want to set this appropriately. So again, if we're just doing a simple checked out or um, a check in event, you know, we would just utilize the on hand to checked out, or if we're doing a check in, we do check in on hand. However, if we do want to use the software to engage in when you're procuring new items and or moving items from being in a procured state to an in inventory state, we would utilize these inventory change options. So. In any case, I know that um, we certainly, you know, this feature set's included within the software. All we have to do is go in there and enable that. So I wanted you to, to let folks know that it is there. If you would like to use this to track your inventories of your consumables and your hand tools, um, you know, IndieSoft can be your total, total inventory tracking solution. So with any questions, uh, please don't ever hesitate. Reach out to myself. Reach out to our technical support team. We're always here to help you. And I uh, hope you all have a fantastic week. Thank you.